Hey guys, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Hey, I just got done building the dirt track in my backyard and it is awesome. So I wanted to share with you guys and it's a, uh, a two-part uh, video for the build because it took two days. So I'm splitting it up um, just to help shorten the length. Feel free to subscribe and uh, hit the bell icon so you'll get notified. One thing I will say is I'm dedicating this track to my uh, younger brother Spencer who recently passed away uh, unfortunately due to an ATV accident so uh, this reminder to all you guys to please buckle up um, if you are in a UTV or side by side that has them and always wear your helmets um, I, I love having fun but um, we gotta be safe out there thanks guys All right, here we are. We just got the dozer unloaded. And now we're gonna get that back to the field where it's gonna get uh, to work. All right, so I'm driving down my trails and I have the Deer 700J behind me. heading up to the field where all the work is uh, is gonna happen so didn't want to uh, to drive the deer over all the concrete driveway so we had to go kind of a, a back way and get through the woods the things like 10 feet wide but luckily the trails are tall enough so off we go. So now it's time to start. Today, we're gonna to start working on the off-road track in the field. I got Jeremy here, um, found him online. He builds these uh, on the side. Well, Have you honest. done any at a guy's house in the backyard? Absolutely, yeah. yes. And that's, that's kind of what I do primarily. There are some that are for actual businesses, racetracks, facilities. Uh, but most everything has been private. So I'm not that crazy then? No, not at all, not See? at all. All right, awesome. So I'm excited. So he got a John Deere 700J here. That thing weighs like, I think 25,000 pounds or something. It's like a 10 foot blade on it. Yep. Um, the thing's a beast. So um, he's gonna get to work. I have a time lapse set up so we can watch it. But um, you know, you drew out the design. You came here a couple weeks ago. Yep. You drew out the design. You kind of just use your own judgment on, hey, what we're we gonna do. We're gonna, not, we're gonna use no fill dirt, right? Nope. So all of this stuff, He's gonna kind of scrape and 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 mold uh, with all the existing land. So I'm pretty excited to see him and let him get to work so that we don't take up his time. But uh, thanks, Jeremy. Absolutely. All right, looking forward to it.
All right, so, you know, Jeremy came out here a couple weeks ago and he looked at the property with me, kind of explained what I wanted to do. This is not going to be a motocross track, meaning not for a dirt bike, but I'm actually looking for um, uh, ATV, go-kart, side-by-side, -side, and even uh, vehicles. So, you know, I have a little Chevy Spark that I use as a kind of a little put-around um, golf cart for the property. And I had some fun with that, so I wanted it to be big enough. So you got two small cars side by side, and uh, maybe one day we'll have a uh, Nader Tater 500 race with um, some uh, beater cars out here. So he's making it wider, and we're not doing any um, big air jumps. You know, not trying to set any records there. I don't drive or ride motorcycles, and uh, I'm not looking to learn on a motocross track and get hurt. So. Um, keeping it to four wheels is the plan and he's going to make some features for that and so what we did is uh, he drew out a sketch for me I'll throw that up here on the screen and you know we we talked about what we want to do the bankings what types of jumps tabletops um, and so then he came out this morning and the first thing he did was mark on the ground with spray paint kind of roughly what he had drawn and then he goes around and basically digs in. You can kind of see a little line here where he just tilted the blade, digged in, and kind of drew the outline of the track. And now he's going over it uh, kind of section by section and either adding the dirt or scraping the dirt off to get the elevation changes that we want. And uh, so this is a dozer that I rented. And then Jeremy came out and he's piloting it for me. Um, since he knows how to build tracks. I'm sure I could figure it out. Um, you know, I've, I move dirt and do some grading and stuff with a skid steer and my uh, Bobcat Toolcat. But this is obviously a much bigger machine and it would take me more time to figure it out. We're gonna knock this thing out in like two days. So he's spending basically, you know, 10, 12 hours um, over um, each day for two days to try to get this done. We'll see how that, how that goes. If we need more time, we'll do it, but that's the plan right now is two days, kind of um, sun up to sun down. You know, he's packed his lunch. He grabs it to go. He's got his pickup truck here with a big uh, diesel tank in the back, fills that guy up at the, um, at the gas station uh, with my credit card, and then uh, keeps this guy filled so it can keep going, chugging along all day long. So uh, he's certainly a... Uh, machine himself to to just plug through this stuff which is exactly how i like to tackle projects as well i don't want to linger i want to knock them out and then uh, get on to the next one so we'll show some footage of him um up close doing the stuff i got my drone out i'll try to show this uh, step by step of how he's doing this and then uh of course later on if you uh like and subscribe to my channel i'm going to do lots of things out here with uh the girls, the, the, my, my, my children, and then myself, and uh, like I said, maybe my friends down the road. So uh, if you have any ideas of what I should do with a track in my backyard, feel free to comment below. Let me know uh, what you want to see, and then uh, we'll see what happens.
Is me? What is that? What is that called? It's a bulldozer. It's a bulldozer? Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to drive on that? Yeah. No, you're scared? Yeah. Is it noisy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, when, it's too loud. It's too loud? Okay. Well, when you get bigger, you can drive on this, okay? All right, so this is about a three acre field and obviously it was it had a slight roll to it but not much elevation change so that's what you can see he's gonna kind of terraform this and and get it to where i want it but then you know the other note is this is a um very much clay soil it's actually very good for an off-road track because it really holds and you know if you're a dirt biker it would bite and give you that grip but um the downside is it doesn't drain very well so that's where there's going to be some unused areas that we're going to use um, as water holding spots where the water will drain um, and also we're trying to slope it so that it goes off um, and doesn't puddle on the track as much as possible You can literally feel the ground shake when that thing goes by. So this here is going to be a turnaround. So he's scraping up that ground and stacking it up here so you can have a bank turn. That's a 10 foot wide blade there. Just moving a good eight, 10 inches of dirt deep.
at the towards the end of the first day here he's been out here um, about 12 hours now I come check on him every once in a while but uh, we got uh, a big mound here so this will be a big tabletop so he's piling up the dirt for that the sun is setting and uh, you know then tomorrow he'll come back and we'll look at finishing it off uh, hopefully get it all done tomorrow he's making some pretty quick work the other benefit is that we got a bigger dozer than he was originally planning this is a 700 uh, he was thinking he might get a 550 or a 650 so um, this machine is bigger it can move more dirt the problem is that it's also a lot thirstier so I get to front the uh, diesel bill for that I'm standing out here. I'm in a low area now. You can see this dirt pile is about as tall as me. And then of course he's up even, uh, he's a lot higher than that. So that's probably, looks like about 10 feet of elevation there versus where I'm at here. We got some other little mounds here that are fixing up. Looks like these are about uh, five feet higher than the, um, the rest of the grade. So that's, that gives you an idea about what they are. Here, if you can see it uh, with the sun in the way, that's a bank turn. So come this way, big turn, and then it's gonna go to the big tabletop that he's up on right now. Jeremy here that um, I hired basically to uh, do all this labor. Um, he's built many tracks before, and so uh, he came out. He actually lives uh, close by. It was kind of a funny story. I was uh, searching online to just figure out uh, you know, how much it costs to build a dirt track, and there was some article, I forget which one it was. Michigan Motocross. Michigan, yep. Michigan Motocross, and you know, it said something like Jeremy from Fenton, Michigan or something. I was like, what? I was like, that's right by me. So um, I hit him up and um, got a hold of him, and, and that was probably about a year ago. And uh, we've been kind of working back and forth on what the plan is. Was I gonna pull the trigger? And uh, now I did. So I guess, Jeremy, tell me a little bit about your, uh, your history of building these tracks and whatnot. <laughs> Yeah, so basically I, uh, uh, in high school, I worked for a friend at a gravel pit and he was also a motocross guy. So on some spare time, I would go and, and we'd work, I'd work on building us a motocross track with some of the equipment that I was, it, in the early days I was running a loader. So I'd kind of start with doing that. And then just over the years, things kind of progressed. Um, um, again, working with my friend Vaughn there, he, uh, he gave me a lot of opportunities to to get behind uh, a lot of different equipment, if you will. And then ultimately, um, you know, we had our own personal tracks um, that, that I would work on and build. And Dozer has been basically the uh, tool of choice. Um, and so ever since I've been a kid, I've been, you know, working on building tracks. Um, and then, you know, so for probably the last, I'd say 15 to 20 years, I've been doing this on the side quite regularly and uh, within the last 10 years for sure it's been um it's been pretty steady you know and ultimately i get you know more requests than i really have time for right um but i uh, i definitely enjoy it it's something that i love to to see you know the reaction on people's faces when they get the end product you know it, it's pretty cool and rewarding in that regard so um yeah i'm just looking forward to you know hearing your feedback once you really get a chance to enjoy it right and so you've done this for some businesses like tracks and then but also yeah. personal so like i'm not the only guy that has one of these in the backyard no absolutely not um you'd be surprised there's quite a few uh majority are all for dirt bikes um yep. but i do do for you know utvs um all kinds of different stuff so um little bikes you know little 50 cc motorcycles up to you know big typical you know 450s and stuff like that for dirt bikes but um 
yeah, so there's uh, a wide array of, of different types of tracks that you can you can have done. Um, I've done them all. Um, done indoor tracks for you know riding facilities, um, outdoor tracks for riding facilities, race tracks that actually you know hold races on you know an actual uh, district schedule that we have here in Michigan. Um, so yeah, I've done all kinds of stuff um, for private and both you know. Um, you know public if you will right so what can you tell me about like when you pick out the equipment like why yeah, so, why this one and is there anything special to um, consider so yeah when i'm when i'm working with the customer um i i try to you know obviously identify the needs of of what the customer wants um budget of course is always a factor uh, but ultimately it's trying to find the right machine for the job um so most often if it's a really small track naturally you don't need a big machine um, or if somebody already has a track and just wants maybe some adjustments done or things like that I don't need a big machine to move a lot of material around um, but in the situation here where we basically had a, a flat field for the most part a little bit of elevation change and stuff but um, I need something a little bit bigger uh, that I can you know move a lot of dirt around create the the jumps and the elevation changes and all that kind of stuff so um, it, it basically boils down to that you need more a little more horsepower uh, to, to move some dirt and in this situation um, you know the other is availability of what you can actually get access to you know right. rental I, I often lease from um, nearby rental companies because shipping is also an added expense so if I can try to get it somewhere close to where we are that's going to minimize that expense which is helpful for the customer um, and in this case being that I'm close to home so to speak I've got some friends that I have uh, that have equipment and therefore I have access to you know more options if you will this was a machine that I've used for other jobs it's a John Deere 700 J um, so it's on the bigger side not as there's definitely bigger equipment right. for sure it's always um, bigger for sure but <laughs> this one I I, I uh, for one based on availability uh, was was um, half of it but the size of it was also important um, it has a wide track on it LGP so that's low ground pressure um, so it also like when I'm building a jump and you're kind of going back and forth packing things in a big wide pad you know prevents me from having to make a lot of back and forth so it helps in that regard but also here being that it's earlier in the season moisture in the ground there's soft spots which your place is definitely has plenty of yep um, so having the, the wide pad also helps that when you're in the soft areas, you're not sinking as much. So um, so all in all, this was just the best based on what I had available, the expense behind it. Um, this is the option that we ended up going with to have fun and enjoy what uh, what you've got to, to play with now. Cool. Well, awesome. Thanks for coming Absolutely. out and doing it. It's been, uh, it's been cool out. I'll share some uh, experiences with you uh, Absolutely. soon I, enough. I look forward to that. As soon as you leave, I'll be zipping around. So. You got it. <laughs> All right, thanks. There we have it, guys. That's the end of day one. I just got to rest a little bit, and uh, we'll be back at it tomorrow.